I think the question is this, like if you get a phone call from Mark Davis and you're a, a coach, it may not be in your best interest to answer it because it means some very bad things are going to be in your future football related. Um, Jim Harbaugh. Well, it's, things are already bad in his future. So I don't, I mean, this present, I don't think it works in his future. Well, I was saying like Jim Harbaugh, he might be like, you know what? I don't feel like dealing with this at Michigan. You know, I, he gets his team back to the playoffs again this year or, or close, uh, back to the playoffs seems pretty likely. Um, yeah, we can't, don't have to get into the machinations of all the Ohio state versus Michigan stuff and how that plays out in the playoff stuff, but both can make it obviously. And if he gets back to the playoffs, even if he falls short of a title, no one's going to begrudge you for taking Michigan to like what three straight playoffs and like having the best run, beating Ohio State a bunch, and then saying, I don't want to deal with the NCAA because they won't let me advance scout. I'm leaving. And you take the job in Las Vegas. I think both the Chargers job, if it opens up, and the, and the Raiders job would be interesting for, uh, for Harbaugh. Uh, just because he, yeah, well, you know, and that's the flip side of Mark Davis, you know, where he says, I don't want Rich Basaccia, is that the guy who loves to make a splash hire. We saw it with Gruden, yeah. we saw it with Josh McDaniels. And if he wants Jim Harbaugh, he'll go out and do it. And the thing about Harbaugh, though, is that remember, if he if they do get punished, and just the way all that evidence points seems like uh, <laughs> you think you he's know, guilty, he, he could have a punishment coming his way. And you know, NFL media had reported last week that if Harbaugh gets hit with an NCAA suspension, he's likely going to have to serve it in the NFL. So if he's suspended, say eight games, he's going to have to sit out the first eight games of his tenure with is that, the Raiders. Is that true? That's what NFL media reported. I'll take the the right arm of the league. I'll trust him. That is what wild. about this, though? Did, what, what about the concern that John Harbaugh, excuse me, Jim Harbaugh, isn't known to stay in a place very long? So now you get him in LA, uh, Vegas, wherever they are, and they have some success, and then you know he's going to be out the door going to San Diego State or whatever, you know, three or four years down the road. I don't think that is a big deal in Las Vegas because what happened in San Francisco, you know, I had a front row seat to that living there sure, was that Harbaugh is butting heads with the front office, yep, with the general manager. And you have an owner in Jed York who was mostly siding with the general manager. So Harbaugh couldn't get what he wants. Well, guess what? In Vegas, Harbaugh will have a direct line to Mark Davis. They'll probably be best buddies. So that's not going to be an issue. So yeah. I think that if there is one place where Harbaugh would work, it's going to be where he has a direct relationship with the owner. And not that he would go to Dallas, but a situation like a Jerry Jones, a Mark Davis, where you have an owner who has no problem with a, a vocal head coach like that. Well, well, Gruden wasn't going to go anywhere either until those emails leaked out from the Washington from the was it the Washington Post that published them. Um, right. And and yeah, like Harbaugh. Remember, the Jaguars drafted Trayvon Walker over Aiden Hutchinson basically because Trip Balky and Jim Harbaugh hate each other, and Aiden Hutchinson has tiny little dino arms. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think I think he he's a name that always is going to get thrown out. It would make sense, and he'll at the very least he'll use the opportunity for leverage. Um, do you think that because of Mark Davis's sort of uh, frugal, general frugal behavior, I assume now he's like off the hook on the Gru uh, paying Gruden any money, that he would uh, be more likely to sort of not make a splashy hire knowing that Josh McDaniels, I mean, he's been paying Josh McDaniels for the next four years. I don't know if he's frugal. He paid John Gruden a lot of money. I don't know what Josh McDaniels contract was, but I would imagine it's probably top 15 ish. Either way, I think the bigger issue for me, and Brees sort of touched on this, I don't think you need to splash higher. I think you need to figure out what works best for making your organization better. And that, to me, step one is taking yourself out of the hiring process and then going to find someone because the league is littered with guys who aren't, quote-unquote, splash hires. Mike McDaniel isn't a splash hire, but it turns out he's pretty good at this job. Um, you know, Brandon Staley year one, but I can't sort of stand on that anymore. But there are guys around the league where you can, you can point to – I don't know if Dan Campbell was a splash hire. He didn't come from a, a ton of uh, success when he was in Miami. I, I think that's the route you want to go down. I, I think we're sort of, we've worn out the path of, oh, this guy was great in 1994. Let's see what he, he can do now. I think you you find like a Ben Johnson's a guy that whose name comes up a lot, the office coordinator in, um, yep. in Detroit. And again, two other names that I should have thought of earlier. Shane Steichen. It's doing well. Jonathan Ginn is doing a lot with very little in Arizona, and that's actually breached the defensive side of the ball guy. I know we're in a pro offensive hiring cycle, but I think any defensive guys that you might be interested in? Lou yeah. Anarumo? Brenton, I was trying to make you not say it. Yeah, I know you were because he. I think Lou. Look, I mean, people. I don't know. People are like don't want to hire Vikings defensive coordinators. Like Mike Zimmer had to be there for like twenty five years before he got a job. Uh, Lou I mean, Anarumo is Bengals, Bengals, Bengals defensive coordinators. Yeah, he's a little what, what did I say? Vikings. Like he was Vikings. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, obviously. Yeah, you meant, got your yeah, Zimmer obviously. Vikings brain line. Yeah, yeah. Obviously meant Bengals, but yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like, like Blue Rumo would. 
I mean, I would take a hard look at him. Ben Johnson, who Wilson mentioned, um, I think you need to 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 take a look at. I think Rich Bisacci is going to get a, a a peak too, uh, and, and maybe he has to. Mark Davis has to say like, "I'm sorry, I didn't you know give you the job." Blah 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 blah. But I mean, uh, you know, I think I think all those guys will uh, will will get a look, and then wouldn't be shocked at all if they try to go peek at the Kyle Shanahan coaching tree and just see who's you know who's sitting around who's sitting around under the desk and. Um, you might want to, or sitting around by the desk, you might want to grab from the Kyle Shanahan tree or somebody that might be Daniel brought over. I mean, maybe the Bobby Slowick, you know, first year, obviously with Texans as the offensive coordinator, but somebody from that tree that could, that could make a lot of sense. Any other well, kind of on that, that thought process, Brenton, uh, somebody that Mike McDaniel brought over. How about Mike McDaniel's offensive coordinator, Frank Smith, where are you going to college? Who went to Miami of Ohio. He would be a great hire. We know how Miami of Ohio guys do in the NFL with uh, Sean McVay, Super Bowl champion Sean McVay, and Super Bowl champion John Harbaugh, both former mm. Miami grads. Great mm. track record. Cradle uh, of coaches. Cradle of coaches. So that would be an interesting name. Uh, you, and then you had Wilson mention the defensive side of the ball. Um, Dan Quinn, I think, you know, people always sniffing yeah, around Dan him. And, and that might be something he might be interested in. And maybe this is the job where Eric Bieniemy finally gets hired. I think that he has it, – it's not his fault that Sam Howell is getting crushed. Uh, and uh, it's, well, I mean, it's not not his fault. I mean, it's not, I mean, the what's offense his, works. What's his title again? The <laughs> offense kind of wor- well. I mean, if Sam Howell's holding onto the ball forever, let's you know. He's Sam certainly was, coordinating yeah, some of it. It is true. <laughs> he's coordinating I, I a little say, bit. Of I would not pin all of the blame on the enemy for Sam Howell taking an insane amount of sacks. And real quick on the coaching payout, uh, Mark Davis, and the Raiders reached a settlement with Gruden in. October 2021. So he's not paying Gruden anymore, even though that was a 10 year contract. And then ESPN says Josh McDaniels had a six year contract. So he's got whatever, four and a half years of paying Josh McDaniels on top of whatever this new coaching staff is going to cost. So maybe going oh. cheap, getting a Frank Smith or a Ben Johnson, somebody who's never been a head coach, is going to be a lot less than hiring somebody like Jim Harbaugh. Yes, will be a lot cheaper to go that route.